Hello and welcome back. In this episode we want to kill the player when they take enough damage. Um, also I'm noticing that there's like 30 spawn points just loose in our scene. So we're going to create a folder for that on map center and environment. Right click create empty spawn points and then click and hold shift click to highlight these and drag them onto spawn points. All right, that's much cleaner. Um, so yeah, we want to kill off the player. Uh, there's a few different things we could do when the player dies. Like we could change the camera perspective to something above the map. And then we could respawn the player. Or we could just load a different scene. Or we could bring up a high scores list. Or we could just pause the game and then pop up like bonus points, like if they got 10 kills they could get an extra 10,000 points or something and then just show it adding to their score. There's lots of different things we could do. I think just to keep it as simple as possible uh, I'm just gonna... yeah... I want it, like, I want it to be satisfying but I also want it to... I want to keep it simple. I think loading like, a, like an endgame scene might be too drastic, like you're getting punched and then all of a sudden it's in a new scene. Uh, that might upset the player. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I'm just gonna pause the game and then display text that says like you died or something. And then load the main menu after that. Alright, so if you go to player health, um, if that's not open, you can hit control shift and T at the same time, and then player PLH for player health. And now we have this die function that we created earlier, and we hadn't really put in anything there yet. So when that happens, we're going to pause the game. So time.timescale equals zero. And... Uh, we could just use the same text that we were using for the wave 1. We could just say, like, you failed or something. So let's get a, a reference to that. And that was called wave counter. So, public, text, and we don't have... We don't have the text class imported yet, so we need to do that using Unity Engine.ui. And then we can say text uh, death text. And we can set that to uh, crushed. And now, I don't want to have the exact same thing there, so just bring this down. Actually, we might as well just use the same text. Uh, death text dot text. Sorry about that. Now find the FPS controller, find the health script, and drag wave counter onto death text. Now when he dies, it should say crushed. And then we're just going to invoke another method. And we'll call this restart. After two seconds. Then we have to create a function for that. Void restart. And we're just going to load the main menu. So to do that, we have to say using UnityEngine.SceneManagement. And then we're going to say SceneManager.LoadScene0. And that's just that. So we're going to kill the player. We're going to signal that they're dead. We're going to pause the game. And we're going to load the main menu. 
And it's been such a long time since we created the the player health script. Uh, I don't actually remember if he takes damage correctly yet, but we'll see what happens. Looks like he's taking damage. Alright, and it paused the game. Uh, <laughs> that That's not exactly what we want, though. So, uh, what what can we do? When it ended the game, the player could still look around. They could see the, they could still see their weapon, and they could see the enemies that were now just frozen in place. Um, I think I'm just gonna hide all that stuff, and I'm just gonna create a panel UI panel. And I want to make it a little bit bigger than the screen. Because you can see it's like you can sort of see the faint border. So just uh, make it negative in each direction. Like that. We could just, let's say negative 15. Like that. And now I'm going to make that pure black. Move the alpha all the way up to the top, and bring the color all the way down. And I think rather than doing all of this within player health, I'm actually going to give control of this text to reticle controller. Because, or I'm sorry, uh, what, what was it? Was it called menu controller? No, I guess the wave manager was doing everything. Let's see what's inside menu controller. Pausing and resuming. All right. So, well, I didn't really um, build the menu in a way that makes sense. Um, it it would have made more sense to have one script control all of the menu functions, like all of the user interface and the cursor and everything. Um, but now the control of those elements is spread out between multiple classes, and I I could repair that right now. Uh, but it, it might be kind of difficult for you guys to follow along with me. So, what should we do? Um, I guess I'll just forge ahead and just manually keep updating all the elements in their own separate classes. Um, so right now we're working on player health. And when he dies, we set the time scale to zero, death text becomes crushed, and, and then we restart the game after two seconds. Uh, I'm going to set that to 1.5, just make it a little bit shorter. I want to enable this panel to black everything out, so let's get a reference to that. Public game object panel. And when the character dies, panel.blackout becomes active. Uh, by default, it's disabled. And so it's only going to show up after the player dies. We're going to set time scale to zero. And I think that'll be enough, so let's go ahead and hit play. Also, it took the enemies a long time to kill me, so I'm going to increase the damage that I take when the enemies hit me. And I'm not sure if that was in player health. Take damage. Uh, that must be within the enemy script. Alright, so, that, so that's in Axon Movement, Attack, um, Broadcast, Play Attack, Audio, Calculate, Hit. Alright, and then within Calculate, Hit, we're passing 10 points of damage. 
And let's just move that up to 40. Now go back into play mode. Wave 1. Alright, so he killed me in a few hits, and the game froze. That's because we don't have a reference to panel blackout. So within... Sorry about that, the recording stopped because my hard disk was full. I had to delete some things. Alright, so now we need to make sure we have a reference to panel blackout. Which, I, I, I mean in that panel blackout and drop that here. And now when the game ends, we should actually black out the screen and pause the game. So wave one starts. Here come the enemies. And they killed me pretty fast. And for some reason they keep making that noise even though the game is paused. Uh, why do they do that? So, enemy movement. Broadcast message, play, attack, audio. I guess the game timer is still counting even though we froze time, which is frustrating. So let's just, um, if dead equals true, or, or, whoops, or time dot time scale equals zero. So if the game is paused, don't do this stuff. And that way we won't be moving or attacking. Go back into play mode. Alright, so that successfully killed the player. Now, very quickly, let's go back into player health and make sure we hide the reticle when the player dies. And we can actually just call this pause function from player health. And that'll take care of setting the time scale as well as, oh yeah, so menu control dot instance dot oh, I guess I hadn't set up a singleton for this yet. So public static menu control dot okay, and then instance instance equals this. And now, from player health, menu control dot instance dot pause. So that so that'll make sure the reticle gets hidden when the game ends. Oh, I, um, yeah, that should, that should be fine. And I think I'm going to move the wave text up up a little bit. So when the pause menu is active, I think I want wave counter to be like here. And I'm going to move we zoom down. There. Alright, once more going back into play mode. 
Wave 1 starts. The enemy attacks me. I get killed. It says I died. I can resume or quit. And quit doesn't actually do anything because we're running inside the Unity Editor. And I also want to um, disable the pause button, or I, I mean the resume button. Because if the player is dead, we don't want this to say resume. It should it should be blacked out or something. Uh, resume. If if we disable the button, that's essentially the same as setting interactable to false. Uh, and then it, it's a little bit, like, washed out. Um, but th it's not very easy to tell, so we're not going to worry about that. Uh, I think I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just going to be really lazy about it. And something broke. No reference. FPS mouse look. Okay, now that happened when it tried to load the main menu. And uh, now all of a sudden it can't find the FPS script. So to fix that we can just say if FPS not equal to null. Go back into play mode. And when the game ends, when it says crushed, uh, we can't use an invoke there because the game is paused so that the invoke never fires. So from player health, we can't do this. And actually, what we'll do, we'll just do that with like a value of 0 0.01. So as soon as the player hits resume, it it's going to load the next scene. So the game starts. Enemies come at me. They kill me. And it breaks. Ah, oh, this is so frustrating. I'm going to pause the video and look into this. Alright, so it's the same problem as before. Uh, we're loading the main menu and it's losing all its references to other things, so we're just going to say if menu equals null, if radical equals null, there. And there's still probably even more things that are going to break. It's just part of the process. Alright, so nothing broke that time. That's good. Okay. And now, surprisingly, the invoke is actually firing right away. Uh... Where was that? Player health. Let's set that to one second and see what happens. And just to make the debugging go faster, um, let's go to Axon Movement and set this up to 100 so we can kill the player right away. Alright, so he killed me right away, and at least one second has passed, and it's not doing anything. If I click on resume, then it takes about a half a second, which is so weird. 